Hello, and welcome back to another chapter in the Sky Blue Studios tutorial series. In this video, we're going to create a basic menu in which the player can open a level, read some instructions, or exit. So first, we're going to create a new level in our tutorial source folder. We'll just go add new level. I'm going to call it L underscore menu. I'm going to open this one up. We'll just save this one. Okay, so we already have uh, this logic in here to add the menu to player, but we don't want to do this um, in the player anymore because that means that when we open our game level, we'll also have the menu on our screens. So what we want to do is delete this, compile and save, then open up the level blueprint. And so then in this, we're going to right click and create widget and we're going to select menu we're just going to do this on begin play and the only player will be get player and obviously the only player in the menu and then we're going to add to viewport and we'll leave Zelda at zero because we're only going to have the one um, and then let's compile and save and we'll go back and we'll now go into the widget menu so this is following on from our previous tutorial in which we already set up this really basic uh, menu so let's just delete this button and then we're just going to, because right now we have a border as our background. And a border doesn't give us all the location settings that a canvas panel does. So we're just going to uh, drag in the canvas panel to the border. And we'll set its padding to zero. Now we can drag in a piece of text for our title. And by default, it's white. So we're just going to make it black going to make the size to content so it stays at the size that it needs to be make it centered we'll make it say tutorial and we'll make the font much bigger like 48 or even bigger than that Let's try 96 and we're just going to center it uh, first we'll make sure it's centered in the screen by clicking on this one so this makes our justification uh, so this changes which point on the screen this control will scale and position itself relative to. So we've just changed it to the center, so now this will always stay this relative distance from the center of the screen. Um, and we're just going to reset its position X and Y. But you can see it's not actually centered, the top left is, cent is in the center. So we need to change the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5. Now it's centered. Uh, and we'll leave the size and that um, by itself, but we don't really want it in the very center So we're just gonna make it go up a little bit. Maybe put it to 56 So now we need three different buttons uh, one to load the player level one to uh, open the uh, instructions and one to exit so we're going to drag in a button make it a bit bigger and myself I'm personally a fan of a, a flat style of buttons, so I'm going to make uh, the background white. If you don't, if you don't see these textures, uh, it's because you haven't got um, engine content uh, viewable, which so you just have to change the settings to that. We'll just open up, uh, make make them all white, so it's nice and flat looking, and you can see we can't see it now. Uh, and also change the padding so that we don't get any weird effects when we click on it. Uh, and we'll change the color to. That doesn't that doesn't change it. That changes the uh, content uh, as uh, the background color is what we need. So we need to put that down to there, and maybe the, the we'll leave that at white. We'll change the content itself. So we'll now uh, do the same thing where we centered it, and we'll do this, and we'll make the alignment centered as well, and we'll make the size. Uh, 560 by 120 
And now we're gonna drag some text into that button and they'll say it automatically puts it in the center and everything because it automatically puts it centered here. We'll make the uh, padding zero. The padding is just um, like the amount of pixels from the top and right and left and bottom that it its maximum size can be. And we'll make it fill up the entire thing and we'll make it centered. Oh, actually, we need to make it centered there. And we'll make it say, play, if I can spell correctly. We'll make the font bigger, 48. Looks pretty good. And that's all pretty good. And then we can just copy and paste this button. We'll also want to name it first. So I'll name it button underscore play. Then we can copy and paste. You can't control C, control V. Uh, they don't allow you to do that. We'll name this one instructions and we'll center it again. But the size is already good and now we'll just give it an offset of uh, let's say 160 and change the text to say instructions without the bracket. And then again, uh, for our exit button, and we'll change this to say exit. Okay, so now we've got our basic look. Of course, you could add a background, uh, like a nice looking background and other things that say other things and more buttons, of course, but this will be fine for just a basic menu. So we'll compile and save, first of all. Now we wanna make sure, so we can actually use these buttons inside. We need to actually create events for them. So if we, we select each one and I'll actually add a sound for them as well. I'll go compile success and same for this one. And this one, oops. But yes, we need to actually give them events. So you can see we have on clicked events, on pressed events, and on released events. So if we just add an event for this one, it gives us an event in the event graph that we can use. So event on clicked play, we want to open level, and we need to give it a name. So our our level is called if we can find it, uh, uh, starter map. It's called starter map. So if we just make sure we spell it right, we can just copy the text and paste it into the widget. We already have all these, also all these settings here. So absolute means that it will open the new level and delete the old one we were just in and options allows us to give it a string of extra settings to use, but we don't need either of those changed right now. So this will open the level, but the thing is, if we open it, the widget will actually stay on the screen because uh, the widgets are outside of the actual levels themselves. So we also need to remove uh, widget, remove parent. Uh, so now this will open the level and remove this widget so we can play in a new level. Now we need to, do, we need to also put in the new uh, events for the new ones, or the uh, instructions and exits. So for instructions, we're actually going to open up a new widget, which has our instructions. So we're not going to do that one yet because we don't actually have our new widget yet. For exit, we're going to unclicked, we're going to uh, console, execute console command, and it's the console command is just exit. So let's compile and save and test this out. Oh, you can't see my mouse because we also, in the level blueprint, we also need to change input mode. We will go UI only, in widget to focus, we will get this widget, 
target, we'll get that player controller, and we don't need to lock it to the port. Now if we compile and save, and play, and you can see my mouse, if we click play, it makes a noise. And here we are in our, in our level. If I stop, uh, it, it didn't... That's one problem that we need to fix. You see that I couldn't actually move the mouse or anything in the game. That's because the input method is still set to UI only. So in the widget, we also need to change the input method. Input mode, game only. And we will get player controller. So I'll fix that problem. Now let's test out the exit button. Exit, in, if you're testing it, exit will just close it. You can see it just stopped um, playing. So we can see that works as well. So now we know both our buttons are working, uh, let's also make the instructions. So that means we need to create a new widget. So we'll go use interface widget and we'll call this widget underscore instructions. Save and open this up. And we have a blank widget again. Uh, we'll create the uh, the border that we had, the white border we had in the previous one. We'll make it fill the entire thing, get rid of its offsets, and that's all fine. Get rid of its padding as well. Uh, so now we have our oh, wait. the those offsets haven't been fixed. There we go. Now we have our our back border. Uh, so we'll also just create a big piece of text, which we cannot see again, of course. We will make it. Uh, we make it. Won't make it fill the whole thing, but we'll make it uh, quite big. Uh, oh, we can't make it quite big because we don't have the uh, canvas panel. So let's drag the canvas panel. Oh, we have to put that under that canvas panel. Put the canvas panel on the border, and then put the text box under that canvas panel. Something you forget a lot when you're making widgets is those settings. Uh, and now we can make it a lot bigger. So let's make it. Let's try 1280 by 720, make the text centered, and here we can type in our whole uh, instructions. We also need to make auto wrap text enabled, uh, otherwise the text will just go off the widget. So now we can type in our instructions, so for instance, this is a list of instructions for our test game and UI in which we have a menu to test out the said things. You can see now it's it's uh, wrapping the text and we have it goes on to the next line. And obviously you can type a lot more and that's what this is the size is for, but we'll just leave it that, like that for default. And uh, right now though we can't go back into our previous widget. So what we need to do is we need to get a button and drag it into the canvas panel. Uh, apparently the canvas panel didn't make full screen, oh well, uh, we can just do that now, and center our text again, there you go, it's centered, now the button's up in the top left, uh, that's basically where we want it, but we're going to make it a nice size, let's try 160 by 160 and we'll not put it right in the top left actually let's make it 120 and then we're also going to make it flat again just because that's what I like you don't have to but I do and change its padding to zero on both and we will for the sake of being able to besides make the background color a nice gray uh, let's make let's put some text in it and we'll just make the text be backward symbol and we'll make it size 48 and there we go now we have a back button so let's just name the button underscore back and give it the sound and then on events on clicked we'll add and so in this one on the click button back we need to 
uh, create widget. I'll make it uh, menu. Get player controller. Then add to viewport. And then we need to remove this one from the viewport. Like that. Uh, and compile and save. And then if we go into our menu, now we can copy and paste all of this, well, this little bit of stuff. And in the menu, we can paste it again for the uh, uh, instructions button. So let's just add the event and then paste it and change me th this widget menu to instructions. Now if we compile and save, press play, instructions opens up our instructions, exit closes it, and play loads our map and we can move around and use it how we, our map was previously. So that concludes our tutorial in UE4. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye.